Hello everybody, Treno here, and today I want to look at a couple of Chilean tanks I think should be added into War Thunder. These tanks would probably go in the Israeli or Italian tech trees, as they had a lot to do with the modifications made to the tanks. The first Chilean tank I want to look at is the M60 Sherman tank, a variant of the M50 and M51 Sherman tanks as used by Israel. During the 1980s, Chile was looking to upgrade its obsolete Sherman tanks, which were now somewhat old, not to mention obsolete, but due to an arms embargo didn't really have a lot of good options on buying replacements. Luckily for them, Israel was looking to get rid of its now old M50 and M51 Shermans and was willing to overlook the embargo. However, due to the 75mm and 105mm guns already on these tanks being somewhat old and needing major repairs, it was decided to sell separately an Italian-Israeli developed 60mm high velocity mobile support or HVMS gun. These would be shipped separately from the tanks which were sent with their existing armament while the new 60mm guns would arrive in Chile for installation at a later date. Now this might sound like a downgrade in regards to calibre, but the HVMS is surprisingly very good in the anti-tank role. In testing, it was found that the HVMS could penetrate up to 120mm of armour at 2000m at a 60 degree angle. According to one source I've read, the British 105mm was only capable of the same penetration at a maximum of 1800m. So the HVMS is potentially more powerful than that weapon, albeit with a smaller shell. I've also read claims that the weapon penetrated the side armour of two T-62 tanks placed side by side at 2000 metres, which would be a massive achievement, though I'm not able to confirm if it's true or not. Unfortunately, I've also not been able to find penetration figures for below 2000 metres, but no doubt they would be pretty impressive. Along with the new guns, the old V8 460 horsepower diesel engines were replaced with new V8 535 horsepower diesel engines. This doesn't seem to have impacted speed too much, which remains around 25 miles per hour or 40 kilometers an hour, but did result in changes to the engine deck, which now has the exhaust coming out of the top of the deck and hanging off to the right side of the tank. Armor was unchanged, while the crew complement remained at five a driver, bow machine gunner, gunner, loader and commander. I think when added to War Thunder, this would make a fairly interesting vehicle. Being able to penetrate vehicles up to the T-62 from the front from great distances, though hobbled by the Sherman's not great armour and slower speed compared to some later tanks. With regards to the battle rating, I would have thought around 7.3 between the 20 pounder and 105 mm British vehicles. But the M51 Sherman it's based off of has much greater penetration with heat shells at only battle rating 6.0. So potentially this could go around 6.0 to 6.3, though I feel this might be too low for it. Regardless, I think this would be a great tank to have in War Thunder at either battle rating. The next tank is a Chilean variant of the M24 Chaffee, which in many ways resembles the NM116 Panzerjäger which I covered in a recent episode about Norwegian tanks. Link below if you want to check that video out. Like with the M60 Sherman, this was upgraded with the 60mm HVMS cannon, with the 120mm penetration at 2000m being far superior to the old 75mm gun. The upgrade to the armament gives this old World War II light tank a weapon capable of taking on early MBTs, which when combined with its speed and lower silhouette, would make this a capable combat vehicle even in higher tiers. In addition to the new main armament, the 50 caliber machine gun was moved to in front of the commander's cupola, while a 30 caliber machine gun was placed on the old 50 caliber mountain. This would likely not make too much difference in game, but does give a slight boost to the tank's AA capability. Mobility has also been given a bit of an upgrade, as the Chilean Chaffee was also given a new Detroit 53 T6 V 275 horsepower diesel engine, replacing the two engines it was previously fitted with. Despite the new engine, once fitted with the 60mm gun, its overall speed remained at around 35 miles per hour or 56 kilometers an hour, so the same speed as a regular M24 Chaffee. I've also seen it claimed that it had a new transmission fitted, going from 8 forward and 4 reverse gears to 5 forward and 1 reverse gear, though I've yet to find confirmation on this. Armour was unchanged, as was the crew complement, which remained at 5, with a driver, bow machine gunner, gunner, loader and commander. Despite being armed the same as the M60 Sherman, this would likely play somewhat differently. 
While the M60 might survive some hits if it's lucky, the M24 will be unlikely to be immune to anything, even auto cannon fire from certain angles. As such, it would need to rely on its speed and agility to get around enemy tanks in order to fire at them from the flanks. Unlike the Norwegian NM116 upgrade, this does still retain its top speed, so would likely have more success in this role. Due to the nature of the 60mm HVMS, it will also likely do well at long range gunnery duels, though this will not be its strong point. Overall, I think this would probably go in at around 7.3 on the battle rating, as this will give it a chance of facing some early Cold War vehicles, though unfortunately some late World War II vehicles may also be facing it, but putting it at a higher tier may cause some issues in itself. So that's it for today's episode. I had considered adding in the M41 Walker Bulldog and other vehicles that were fitted with the 60mm HVMS, but as far as I'm aware these were prototypes so I've chosen to focus on the vehicles that were actually used in large numbers. I'd like to hear your comments on these vehicles. Do you think they would be a good fit for War Thunder and where would you put them with regards to battle ratings? Are there any other Chilean vehicles I might have missed that you would like me to cover in future videos? I look forward to reading your questions and answers in the comments. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.